Hi everybody, um, this is a different video than what I normally do. Um, normally um, I use my YouTube channel to, to sell Game Boys on, on eBay. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about what I do that's special and maybe help some other modders out that are getting started, right? So, I mean, many of you have seen my, my units on eBay. Um, you, you, you're aware of the quality. Um, one thing to note when you're filming your Game Boys, it's always good to put a light on the screen. Um, it helps it helps make the colors look a little sharper. So here, I've got my little portable light here, uh, which which has daylight balance light, which looks really good. So I use this when I photograph. I use it when I film my Game Boys. Everything looks great, right? Um, first thing, you know, I put this out in my videos a lot, but I use I use the chunky uh, byte byte version or bit version chip, whatever you want to call it, which. Um, which really is great because it fits in the spot really nice. Um, some of you guys are going to be buying kits where, um, where you're you're going to get a tiny little chip and you're going to have to like hot glue that in place. Here's what the chip looks like here. Um, so um, I would go for this larger version. Um, you know, it gives you more area to solder to. It gives you more um, room to work with. And all you have to do is wrap it up in electrical tape and put it in the spot up here, and it can't move at all. You know. Um, with with a smaller chip, with what I've seen a lot of people hot glue those in place, and they'll have buttons issues with the buttons going haywire and all kinds of other nasty issues like that. Let me just focus this a little bit to my workbench. Um, so the second piece of equipment that I get that I recommend you get is a really high quality chisel. So this is a woodworking chisel that I also use for woodworking. I keep it razor sharp, and when I'm when I'm making my Game Boys, I can I can get under the screen with this and and just really pry away any gunk and residue and, and peel off the polarizer with this, and then you know after I've I've done a really good job with that, I can go in with my my Q-tips here and 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 really pure alcohol. Um, this is 99% pure, um, and 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 really go nuts removing any residue that's left behind. But I find that once I use this chisel, I don't have a lot of problems. Um, I use I use a really fancy screwdriver. Uh, this is a ratcheting screwdriver or a Yankee screwdriver. Um, you might have saw this in Breaking Bad. There's a scene where this this plays in. Um, one of the guys is using it. But all you have to do is push in, and it t turns around. This lets me unscrew Game Boys really fast. You know, you probably know in the original Game Boy, there's probably about 30 screws holding the thing together. So I spent a lot of time with that. Um, let's talk about special tools I use. I mean, those those are pretty pretty boring compared to. A dental pick. That's a tool I really recommend, right? So when you're when you're bi biverting, you have to pull off these two little pins here. A lot of people will scratch them off here, um, but if you scratch, that's not going to be super secure, right? What I do is I go in with my dental pick. Um, let me make sure that you can see that, um, and I just get it underneath the pin. Um, this is one of the pins I need to remove in the in the back, and then apply my heat. Normally I do this the other way. Okay, here it comes. And now, um, now that pin is completely off the board, right? So, so what I've done is I've just just by doing that, I've broken the connection between um, the main board and the and the ribbon cable here. And, and you can see that now the now the pin is up in the air, so it's really easy for me to solder to. So this is a great tool to speed up that that nasty job of having to scratch these little traces off, and save you a lot of time. Um, super useful tool. Just use a Game Boy case to hold your polarizer filters when you're when you're um, working on it. Um, so you, you guys might have heard me talk about adding a decoupling capacitor. Um, naturally, when you when you put your your uh, your backlight in, you, you might introduce a hum to the audio system. So I add a, a, a large capacitor. This one's a 820 UF. Um, it, it it goes. You solder it in right here uh, between the the V, the voltage, and the ground, the G. Um, I don't think it matters which which cable you put to which. I put my uh, my um, positive signal to the volt, voltage and the negative signal to the ground. Um, and then that'll really reduce the, the hum uh, and it fits in the space right here in, in, the, in the body. Um, I also color code my, my wires here so I always I always uh, put the same orange wire to the same pin to the same part of my chip which makes it really easy for me to put these together assembly style. Um, let's get more advanced. Um, this is an art supply, a fan brush. You can pick this up really cheap. This will make your day a lot easier. Um, so, so it's great when you're when you're putting your 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 when you're when you're trying to clean out every speck of dust 
Um, you can get in here with the fan brush and easily brush it out. So I, I recommend you go to Michael's or Art Supply Store um, and, and pick one of these up. It'll, it'll really help you. So, so finally, um, I want to give you guys a really important tip. Um, you, you, might, you might have seen when you put your screen together, there'll be like what looks like a wet spot, especially after the Game Boy sits for a while between the screen and the, and the polarizer filter. Um, you might see the same thing like if you've ever applied a screen protector to a phone or to a computer. Um, my favorite technique for getting rid of that, um, you know, over the years I've tried anti-static cloths. You know, it's like this is a photographic anti-static cloth. It's made by Ilford, a photographic company. I do a lot of photography on the, on the side. So you, I tried to use that to reduce the amount of static. Um, you can try Snuggle or whatever brand. Um, fabric softeners, oft, often fabric softeners have anti-static uh, properties. Um, you can try a plastic cleaner that has anti-static anti properties. Um, all those things don't seem like they work so well. And so my worst fear is always shipping off a Game Boy and a customer getting the Game Boy and seeing a water spot, what looks like a water spot develop when it's really static. They call them Newton rings. Um, um, that's the technical term for that, for that phenomena. So what I do is, is pretty unique. So I take a very fine powder. Um, this, is, this, this stuff is called Diatomaceous earth. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it because I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, it's actually like a it's a, it's a fossil. Uh, it's a powderized fossil uh, that that that's naturally occurring in the, in the environment. Um, this is what Noble used uh, when he invented dynamite. He he mixed this stuff with uh, glycerin, which made a stable base. We're not making explosives here. I use this for pest control. Um, so I just simply put a little bit of this on my fan brush. Um, and then I, I I brush it off on my on my pants or whatever, and then I just lightly um, apply this to my both sides of my polarizing filter. And this stuff is so fine that you can't see it at all. Um, but what this microscopic dust does is it prevents it puts a barrier between the glass of the of of the of the screen and 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 the polarizing film. This this very thin barrier of dust, which which prevents the two surfaces from touching, which prevents those those rings from developing. So you could use, you probably don't want to buy this crap, you know, because, you know, you know, you can use it for pest control. It's actually completely non-toxic since it's just a fossil, but um, it basically dries out and, and, and cuts tiny little bugs. Um, they actually feed it to horses and livestock too. Um, but you could use baby powder, that would have the same effect. Um, some photographers talk about using hairspray for a very similar application where they put a, a, a clear plastic negative between two pieces of glass. They have that same problem, like if you've ever scanned negatives or something like that, you might see those rings develop. But they'll spray hairspray onto the surface. But I recommend using, getting a fan brush and just applying a little baby powder, or you can buy this dust, whatever. Um, and it'll completely prevent those wet spots from developing. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to show you. That, that's quite a bit. I, I organized my screws in little, little, uh, little different tins. Um, that makes it handy to keep my my large uh, tri-wing screws away from the the normal screws. I, I think that's about it. Um, that, that's really my workshop. Here's my my soldering station over here, um, where I can easily grab my soldering iron. Um, I, I think that's it. Oh, and the other, the other thing is, uh, you know, when you're soldering, you know, you want to use flux. This helps the solder uh, stick to, to whatever you're soldering. Um, and you're always going to want to apply flux to your to your wires first. Uh, just give it a little drop of flux. You can you can put the flux on a Q-tip or something. And then you want to put a little solder on the wire. Um, and, and that'll make it a lot easier to connect the wire to whatever it is you're soldering. You know, especially if there's flux on both parts. So you'll have a really strong connection that's going to last. Um, so I think that's it. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.